Oh, didn't see you there. Yeah, I'm just here sipping on some glitch. I got the Moonbow flavor. Even though it's called Moonbow, it tastes like rainbows. I don't know why they named it that, but let me tell you, it's delicious. You should definitely try this. All you have to do is go on glitchenergy.com and use my code Larry Larry. You get 20% off at checkout. Also, they have a starter kit that you can get that is only $20. It comes with five different flavors you can sample, as well as a shaker cup that glows in the dark. So yeah, jump on that. Hey guys, Larry here for today's video. I wanna talk about five characters that I believe personally got better competitively in Smash Ultimate. What I mean by this is that for one reason or another, there are more people playing this character and are the results in general have just gotten a lot better. Just a side note for the list, I will not be including any DLC characters. Reminder that if you like the video to drop a like, and if you really enjoy my content to subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out a lot. With that out of the way, let's get started. At the start of Ultimate's life, a lot of people thought that Sonic was significantly worse than he was in Smash 4. He could no longer shield to stop his spin dash startup, and a lot of his follow-ups, pressuring, and movement options just didn't work the same. It's funny to think about this now because we know that this is nowhere near even close to being the case. Despite Sonic receiving a good amount of changes, the character is still insanely good and you can even argue that he was better than he was in the previous title currently. Sonic has gotten some buffs, but they don't seem significant enough to have drastically improved the character. The main reason why Sonic got better in Ultimate was that the players using the character developed his meta and stopped trying to play him exactly like he was in Smash 4. Although Sonic does not have the ability to cancel Spin Dash startup with Shield, thanks to Ultimate's mechanics and Sonic's amazing mobility, he doesn't really need that option because his neutral is still insanely strong without it. I would say Sonic's combo and pressure game in Ultimate is just as good as it was in 4. You can even argue that it's more versatile compared to what it was in Smash 4 thanks to Sonic's homing attack being a better move in Ultimate, as well as the Shield mechanic changing making his moves more difficult to punish. So to summarize it, Sonic got what many considered to be a huge nerf coming from Smash 4 to Ultimate, which initially deterred players from using him. Once people started to understand Ultimate more, it turned out that the game's mechanics significantly benefited Sonic, so even though he couldn't 100% do the exact things he could in Smash 4, he could still do things very similarly, and in some cases, he had even more options. Cloud, in my opinion, was a pretty good character at the start of Ultimate, but because of how he changed in Smash 4, a lot of people did not want to use him. Without question, Cloud in Ultimate was worse than his Smash 4 counterpart due to now being able to only hold Limit Break fully charged for 15 seconds instead of indefinitely until you use it or lose a stock like you could in Smash 4. A lot of his hitboxes and kill power were nerfed, and they made his grab come out on frame 9 instead of 7. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wow. They really nerfed this character hard, and yes they did, but that just goes to show you how broken Smash 4 Cloud was, because again, even with all the nerfs, he was not a bad character. The mechanic changes benefited Cloud pretty well, and I would say Climazer getting a buff from 4 to Ultimate helped soften the nerfs he got. Fast forward to patch 7.0, and I think that's where Cloud went from being a pretty good character to a great character. They drastically improved the kill power of both his dash attack and up smash, but most important of all, they buffed Cloud's climb hazard recovery wise, allowing him to grab the ledge 4 frames sooner when rising with the move. This made it noticeably more difficult to get Cloud, which in my opinion was his greatest flaw as a character, and a very exploitable one at that. It would go as no surprise that soon after the improvements, his results would get a lot better. I do believe that even without the buffs, we would have eventually seen Cloud getting better results and more people playing him because his toolkit is pretty strong despite the weakness he has. But the improvement to his recovery made him an incredibly strong solo viable character capable of making really deep tournament runs at major events. Diddy Kong, in my opinion, is one of the most buffed, if not the most buffed character in Ultimate. Despite having an infinite that was situational to get, he actually didn't have much going for him at the start of the game's life. Compared to Smash 4, Diddy Kong's moveset was a shell of its former self. A lot of his hitboxes were significantly worse, his kill power was toned down despite it not being amazing in the previous game outside of his down air, and his recovery was the worst it's ever been by a significant amount. The major upside Diddy had in Ultimate over 4 initially was that his banana hitbox was transcendent, meaning that it could not be challenged by another hitbox, and as I previously mentioned, he had an infinite. As the game progressed and patch notes were released, Diddy Kong began to slowly get better. In 5 patch updates, Diddy Kong would receive buffs to improve his hitboxes, strengthen his kill power, 
and put his recovery on par to what it was in the previous game. On top of this, they would buff some of his moves to improve his combo capabilities such as dash attack, neutral air, and up air. The biggest downside to the updates for Diddy was that he lost his infinite combo, which wasn't that big of an issue unless you were one of the handful of players that would consistently go for it and execute the combo. Thanks to all the buffs Diddy received, he went from being a niche mid-tier character to arguably a top tier. If you're interested in knowing in greater detail how Diddy Kong got buffed, I made a video talking about him along with four other characters that got massive buffs that will be linked in the description. Bayonetta is probably the Smash 4 top tier that received the most nerfs coming in from Smash 4 to Ultimate, and justifiably so, considering she was the best character in the game to the point that people wanted her banned. I also think it didn't help that MKLeo ladder comboed Plup to death at the Smash Ultimate Invitational event multiple times before the final bit of the game was even released. Coming from 4 to Ultimate, her combo game was significantly worse thanks to a number of her attacks not comboing the same way as before, as well as her afterburner kick and heal slide having a higher SDI multiplier making it easier for the opponent to escape her combos. Which time also had 3 more frames of startup before activation, its base slowdown duration was cut in half, and the slowdown duration is reduced even more against projectiles. This made her reversal capabilities, which were absolutely absurd in Smash 4, much more tamed. And to add the final nail in the coffin for Bayonetta, her kill power was significantly nerfed due to all of her aerials, which were her most reliable ways of getting kills being drastically changed. Which twist gaining less height, and rage not being nearly as strong as it was in 4 also made it more difficult for Bayonetta to ladder combo the opponent, which was by far her greatest way of stealing stocks and making comebacks. She did receive some improvements going into ultimate such as Wish Twist being more difficult to SDI out of, and she got less landing lag out of connecting her combos with her special moves. But she is definitely by far worse than she was previously. Bayonetta's results improved in my opinion because of a combination of two things. Like mentioned with Sonic, the players had to get used to the changes she got, and like Diddy Kong, she also received some really good buffs. The first big one was to her up tilt, allowing it to more reliably connect into the second hit, which is one of her best kill setups. This was a pretty important buff because it gave her a consistent option to close out stocks. Her heal slide got less end lag, making it a stronger combo tool. Her witch twist got even more buffs, making it harder to SDI out of, as well as giving it less end lag. Witch time also got buffed, making it more usable. Bayonetta was significantly nerfed going into ultimate, and though she's still nowhere near as good as her Smash 4 counterpart, she's become a pretty strong character. Alright, so initially I wasn't going to put Pit on this list, but after Zachary's Kagurubi 9 run with him, I feel like I have to. Pit at the start of Ultimate was an okay character. He had a lot of versatility, but the thing that held him back from being a better character in my opinion was lack of kill power or kill setups. Patch 4.0 and 8.0 would help Pit out in those aspects. Pit received two buffs to his down smash, giving it more knockback and a better angle to close out stocks. His up smash would also receive a buff to make it a stronger kill move. One of the biggest setup buffs Pit received was to his up tilt, down tilt, and up air. Up tilt would have less end lag, making it an easier move to combo out of. Down tilt would also become a better combo tool by improving the launch angle and reducing its knockback. And up air would become a more reliable juggling and kill option by reducing its startup, end lag, changing the launch angle, and also increasing its knockback. These buffs will give Pit not only a much better way to set up for kills, but also an option that can be done to close out stocks or keep the opponent in a bad spot that could potentially lead to closing out stocks. One last buff that I think is notable was his down special which got 5 less frames of end lag, making it a much stronger defensive option and a surprisingly solid move to reversal opponents. Pit has been this good since patch 8.0 and with the recent results the character got at Kagura V9, I'm expecting to see more Pit players on the horizon. That is it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, it helps me out a lot. Also, let me know in the comments what character you think got better competitively in Ultimate that I did not mention. Oh yeah, now I have a TikTok and a Fresh Cut account, so if you want to see more content from me, you can check those out. My Fresh Cut is Larry Lair and my TikTok is the real Larry Lair because someone took the Larry Lair name and I'm really sad about it. But anyways, follow me on those accounts. I'm planning on doing some exclusive content on those platforms. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.